start working with an expansion board to see how we can hook things up to it and some of the features of it. We're going to play with the Maker Bit by Roger Wagner. So we have to go to our MakeCode. Yes, we can still use MakeCode. They've designed blocks for MakeCode. Um, so we have a new project. We have to go to Extensions. So go up to the gear, click on Extensions, and we need to find MakerBit. Now you see there's all these extensions in here that people have created. There are more. Sometimes they just don't get on the front page kind of thing. So you need to type in MakerBit and search. And these are all the, the blocks that Roger has made. Um, the MakerBit one was the first one he made, which was like it had, it had everything in it. Then he broke them out into individual ones in case people only wanted to play with uh, a certain set of blocks. I'm just going to click on the MakerBit one. It drops all of them in. The bad part about extensions is every time you start a new program, you have to go find the, you have to go get the extension. So, as you look down here, here is MakerBit. So there are blocks for the ultrasonic uh, distance sensor, the infrared remote, uh, the LCD screen. The LCD screen is a two-row screen. It's got 16, character, 16 characters on each row. Uh, an MP3 setup, so it can play MP3, MP3s, uh, motors, the, the pins and the touch sensors. Now that's one of the main features, one of the big features of the MakerBit boards is it's got built in 12 touch sensors. So you don't have to play with it. You don't have to wire different buttons. You can just use the touch sensors as buttons. Unless you want to use buttons. So we're going to play with touch sensors. Um, I can get rid of the forever, but there's some things we need to do. Because the uh, the maker bit, the, all these pins here have other assigned functions to them. For example, pin five um, is button A. We're really just going to use the micro bit as the processor. We're not going to use the buttons and the LED screen on it because they would conflict with uh, where I'm plugging things in. So that's one of the first things you got to pay attention to is uh, the conflicts. And I'm just going to get rid of the conflicts by doing this. If I come to the LED and I go to more, there's a LED enable false. Basically what that has done is set all of those buttons that work the LED columns, they're off. They're not going to run the, that LED column doesn't work anymore. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna, we're gonna use the touch sensors. We're gonna light up a couple LEDs, but I'm also gonna put a string of LEDs on this thing. So I need to go get that that NeoPixel um, extension. NeoPixels, NeoPixels. I'm gonna take my NeoPixels. I'm gonna tell it I have a strip of NeoPixels. I did that pretty fast. I'm sorry. Um, go into NeoPixels. I have to set up that I've got a strip. Come on, get me out of here. Yeah, yeah. Um, they made a variable strip automatically. That's that's. I'm fine with that. I'm gonna put it on pin 16. Um, I only have 10 LEDs. I just picked pin 16. Um, I could have picked any other pin. Uh, I know I'm going to use pin 5 for um, little LEDs, so set that, and here's another thing to do. You want to make sure that um, pins are off, so we want to set all LED pins low. Set the initial state. If you want them all to start on, set it to high. I want mine to start off. Um, so that's just for me. Pins. I want to set digital pin high. So here's what I'm saying. When I press sensor 5, t touch 5, set digital pin 5 high. Because digital pin 5 
is going to have a little LED plugged into it. Um, and how about if I touch sensor 6, I turn off my LEDs, my little LED. Um, the maker bit comes with a whole ribbon cable full of 6 LEDs. And then let's see, let's play with that NeoPixel strip. When I press 7, let's turn on some NeoPixels. Um, so let's uh, let's show color red. Yeah, go ahead. That sounds fine. And then when I press 8, I just copy and pasted. Let's change those from red to green. So again, um, on start, turn off uh, the conflicts that we're going to have with the LED screen. Tell us we have a NeoPixel strip. Set all the LED pins, which are 5 through 16, to off to start with. And then here's a, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to want to touch sensor T5, which is, again, automatic built-in. Uh, set digital pin 5 to high, which that could be anything. It just happens to be an LED. And when I touch 6, set it to low, which means turn the LED off. When I press touch sensor 7, take that strip and make it red. When I touch sensor 8, take that strip and make it green. Again, there's this JavaScript possibility here. That's what the JavaScript looks like. So you can always click on that to see what's going on. Um, I get, you, you, we can also, we got 12 touch sensors. We could have had it run 12 different things. I'm only doing four, but that's a good start. So let's name this, um, touch one, let's save it and it's downloading it. And then we'll, we need to go to our downloads folder. Go to downloads. We need to plug in the micro bit. And the micro bit will pop up here. And then drag and drop. And after that's done, we will turn it on. We will hook things up.